Make their Christmas unforgettable with goat guns. Looking for the perfect gift for your husband or man who is a gun lover? Look no further. Goat guns are the greatest gift of all time miniature gun models. They are the perfect blend of quality and detail. From pistols to rifles, there's a goat gun for every collector, history buff, or gamer. Whether for display or for a fun collecting hobby, goat guns will bring joy and excitement to him. Surprise your loved ones this Christmas with a goat gun, the ultimate gift that won't disappoint. Shop at goatguns.com. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Philip Dusick about people analytics and AI solutions for organizations. Dusik, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, Jonathan. It's a real pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have a nice conversation with you today. We're going to be exploring people analytics and AI solutions for organizations. And uh, we'll talk about that generally, but we'll also talk about it within the context of the recent acquisition um, of Workday Acquiring Stories, uh, the organization uh, the, where you're a co-founder and CEO, uh, and I'll sh- share more about that in your bio here in just a moment. So exploring people analytics and AI solutions, I think will be super interesting and fascinating for everyone. And I think particularly in this technology driven kind of remote workplace kind of environment, uh, and, and organizations are trying to do more and more with HRIS and with, uh, people analytics. Uh, I think we all need to increase our competency level when it comes to these issues, Uh, As we get started, I wanted to share Philip's bio with everybody. Philip Dusick was a co-founder and CEO of Stories BI, an augmented analytics startup acquired by Workday Inc. Since then, Philip has been leading the team delivering Workday People Analytics. Before Stories, he focused on enterprise analytics and AI solutions. He has also published Flock Without Birds, a novel about Western civilizations and its paradigm shifts. Super interesting. I've always, uh, I do a lot of writing, but it's all very professional (laughs) and academic. I've always uh, had this kind of inkling that, you know, someday maybe I'll write a a novel, but I'm not sure that'll ever happen. So anyways, kudos to you for doing that. Let's hope. Let's hope you do. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Well, uh, Philip, anything else you would like to add in terms of your background uh, for listeners before we dive on in? Oh, that's a great summary. Thank you. Okay, well, cool. So I guess the first um, first thing to start off, tell us a little bit more about stories, um, the origins and the innovation of stories, and then we can get into the acquisition by Workday uh, and a little bit more context around that. And then we can get into more about just people analytics more generally, the uh, AI solutions and such. Stories um, really is an engine uh, that Um, automatically analyzes data. Um, That's what we have built. And from some other angle, it's in a way a uh, automated uh, storyteller. So you can think of it as, you know, let's let's take in all of the data. And in the case of of Workday now, let's take in all the data about our organization, about our uh, uh, workers and employees. And, um, and let's crunch that and let's output just the top 10, top 20 most interesting stories uh, that we should be looking at. So that's really the core of the engine. And that's what we've built in <clears throat> for the last six years or so. I appreciate that background. Uh, and that's, that's super interesting. So, so you build up your, your co-founder, your CEO of Stories, um, and then you get acquired by Workday. 
tell us a little bit more about that, um, that experience, that process, um, because that's, I think, something that's unique uh, that a lot of people haven't experienced who are listening. Uh, and then we can go from there. We built stories, I, I would say, at, at, at the right time. Um, and we have been one of the first augmented analytics startups uh, that really got this kind of technology uh, to work. Uh, augmented analytics as such is a term that Gartner coined in, in about 2016, 17. And it, it, in a way, it, it denotes a progression from, you know, from just analytics or from just uh, like crude, the, the crude concept of AI. Like we'll just throw something at, uh, at a machine um, and it will tell us uh, everything that's happening in the data. Like th that's in a way a fairly naive uh, concept, right? And augmented analytics really addresses that um, the, the complexity. <clears throat> so what we mean by augmented analytics is we need a, um, typically a human in the loop, but we can augment uh, the human analysts or, or the manager's work through um, an um, AI or machine learning or, or other intelligent uh, algorithm. And that's where augmented analytics really comes um, into play. So, um, and this is where, you know, having built one of the first examples of such technology, like we were um, showcased uh, by Gartner quite a bit. Um, Gartner having, having really defined this area um, they, they started pointing to us also as, as a prime example of um, a startup that, that's really pioneering the work here. And that's how um, several large companies, including Workday, heard about us. And we entered into conversations about, about the Pond Age acquisition. And uh, I, there was at about the same time when we also got, um, uh, uh, got into the Alchemist Accelerator, which is a sort of top B2B um, Silicon Valley based accelerator. And so on one hand, I was moving to the Bay Area already because of the accelerator. Um, and uh, these discussions with Workday opened up at, at about the same time. So um, uh, in the end, we basically chose uh, the option to, uh, to join Workday and focus on the building of the product while leveraging Workday's magnificent uh, sales uh, sales force and you know the, the the whole synergy that comes from uh, from from uh, the large enterprise. Yeah, thank you. And so, and I, I appreciate providing a little bit more uh, context around AI and machine learning as well uh, as as you were building um, everything and and what it can potentially do. So let's, so, so stories gets acquired by Workday. Um, you, you ride off into the sunset. Uh, everyone's happy doing really great things for organizations. That's all amazing. That's wonderful. And so you continue to lead the, the Workday people analytics team. Uh, so let's zoom out now and talk a little bit more specifically, just a, a little bit more generally about people analytics and the types of AI machine learning that can uh, augment that and, and help us um, better utilize the, the vast amount of data that many organizations have around their people, their efficiencies, their, their, um, their performance. Um, what are some of the types of things that you focus on with your team in terms of the, the people analytics for organizations? And what are some of the, the core elements that leaders need to be thinking about if they haven't already? Let me start by saying that, that you know, the original stories technology after the acquisition basically became Workday People Analytics, which is a product. And so I can quite specifically talk about what the product can do. Uh, it analyzes uh, the key areas uh, of uh, um, HCN. So it's uh, diversity and inclusion. Uh, it, um, it's uh, hiring and attrition. Uh, it's organizational composition. It's uh, talent and performance. Uh, it's also now uh, skills. 
and um, th there are further areas you know that we are um, that we're adding uh, to the engine itself so and when you think about these areas that I have just named th those really are the dimensions uh, of of the workforce uh, that uh, that managers today, especially in larger and uh, medium and larger enterprises, really need to be looking at. Yeah, yeah, I think so. All those elements are so important, and I appreciate that you you are focusing on skill areas. You are focusing on DE and I elements uh, because I think uh, kind of the traditional people analytics space has often been more on performance metrics and efficiency uh, metrics and, and some of those sorts of things. And so I, it's, it's really great to see how it's expanding to include some of these other really vital, important elements. And like you mentioned, ultimately the goal of all of this, right, is to help us better understand the human capital piece within the organization and equip leaders with the, the data that would, will assist them in making decisions, uh, in terms of hiring and promotion decisions and how to best support their people and where the gaps are in, 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 uh, in skill sets and competencies and to develop, work towards developing those for their people. All of that is just so incredibly important in the modern workplace uh, because we can't be stagnant. We can't uh, rely on, you know, what we've done well before. We have to constantly be pushing into you know, an unforeseen future and all of this, all of these um, data tools can help us make more informed evidence-based decisions. Right. And, and exactly. I think that's, that's mm -hmm. all wonderful. And, and we just need to be doing it much, much more. What would you say? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What would you say to, uh, I, to I, mm -hmm. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I would, so, so I would maybe just jump in and say, you know, where really is the innovation that we are bringing uh, to the table? Because what you're describing, uh, you know, some listeners might might think, okay, well, we're doing that with our BI tools and with our reports, and we're you know we're we're looking at that. But what we have always seen with this more traditional um, data analytics and, and reporting is that people look at the reports and there are numbers there, but they don't really answer the question of what is important. Like, what is the one thing that I should be acting on today? And, and that is really what our engine provides. Uh, because it looks at millions of data points and it outputs just the top stories that matter the most and it ranks them. So when it says, okay, well, you know, the, you are losing people in this location and it's, uh, it's, uh, mobile Android engineers with this and this um, tenure uh, and and they have these common characteristics. Uh, when you get that story and the engine tells you, uh, and this is the number one story across the whole organization. Like we looked at those 20,000 people that work in your organization and, and this is the number one. Like that's extremely powerful, right? Uh, when it's a ranked story. Um, or when you know that oh, this, you know, a similar story is, is, is the fifth most important one in the organization, but is the most important one within my own area of responsibility. And so that, that, that insight together with the prioritization is really where, uh, you know, where, where, where the power lies. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, The Journey of Becoming a Truly Remarkable Leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue. What some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There's no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of our problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership 
will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all excellent. Um, and I appreciate uh, just a better understanding of, of the unique features of what uh, Workday People Analytics can offer. Uh, what also, what would you say to, to organizational leaders perhaps listening to the podcast today? And they do think, yeah, you know, we're already doing some of this uh, with our own reporting um, or even they perhaps they know maybe they're a small to medium sized business. They know that they should be doing this, but they haven't really started even. Uh, what what would you say would be the, f- the first steps that they should take in trying to better understand you know their uh, people um, management and, and analytics strategy for their team for their organization? Right. Well, I, I, so I will give the answer that that's possibly unpopular, but it's um, the the, the place to start is really the end goal so we see a stark difference um you know we workday is going through hundreds of customer implementations every year and we just see a stark difference between two groups of, of customers the one says you know what we'll just start easy we'll we'll put in our transactional system we'll we'll start collecting data We'll see how it goes. And then eventually in phase two, phase three, we'll get to analytics. And when you talk to these customers three years or five years down the road, they are still trying to get to analytics, right? And they are still trying to cleanse their data and and uh, and define what is it really that they are trying to get out of the transactional system. On the other hand, the group of uh, customers who, who take the plunge and say, okay, well, we really want to be to transform our business into a data-driven business. And this is how we think, you know, we as an organization can exist as a data-driven business. They define the vision, they really define how um, like how, how they work in that ideal scenario, what insights they are getting, what um, um what metrics they are measuring. Um, th- that's where uh, the, the companies actually start um, shaping their transactional system and the whole data layer and their data quality um, processes so that they reach that endpoint. And so the hard path is is often the more successful part. That would be my answer. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I I agree. I I just think it's so important uh, that we begin with the end in mind, that we focus on the why behind what we're trying to accomplish um, with any strategy really, but certainly with a people analytics approach. And, and I'm a big, big believer in in creating people centric organizations. And sometimes I think people think on the one hand, like a people centric organization, that's at odds with a people analytics strategy, because now you're talking about quantitative stuff and it's not, you're talking about people as numbers as opposed to people as people. And I, I push back on that because I say, no, when you, when you have the data to make uh, evidence-based decisions that actually target the specific needs of actual people, you can, you can really do so much more with the oh, resources absolutely. that you have, and ultimately that, that that people ge- that people centric organization um, can thrive as you utilize mm. data more. I would say, you know, I would say you can you can have a non analytical people centric organization uh, as long as you know everyone in the company, right? So if you have a startup of, of thirty or fifty people, that's that's good, uh, that's fine. Um, but if you have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people in your organization, how can you make a people-centric organization without without 
you know, without knowing anything about those people, right? So data there is the best proxy for uh, for connection in those yeah, large organizations. And, and, yeah, exactly. And to your point, in small organizations, it's all built upon this idea that you just, you interact with people, you just know them, right? You know what's going on. Uh, when you don't have metrics, when you don't have um, the analytics to support decision-making in a large organization, inevitably what ends up happening is it's still based on stories, but instead of knowing the story of every person, it's all anecdotal and you only know little pockets. And so then you're making right. decisions for everybody that's based on right. extremely limited understanding of the circumstances of everybody. And that becomes really problematic. And especially when we're talking about like DE and I, for example, I mean, goodness, if, if you want to have uh, undefensible, indefensible um, types of policies, practices, procedures, and promotional practices and such in an organization, uh, do it based off of anecdotal understanding of your people and their needs. Uh, and inevitably, what ends up happening is those implicit biases that we all have start to manifest Absolutely. because you're, you're, you're allowing um, those narratives to drive your decision making as opposed to what the data is actually telling you. So, I mean, for so Absolutely. many reasons, so many reasons, as you've well articulated, we just need to make sure that we're that we're utilizing this data. And if we don't have it yet, or if we have it, but we don't really know how to utilize it yet, um, it, it's worth taking the time, taking, you know, prioritizing this because um, it's gonna, it's going to have a tremendous ROI. I can I can give you an example from you know for from uh, Workday as such, like how how Workday works actually internally uh, with uh, with its employees. We've um, so, um, em- you know, employee culture, employee engagement is, is a huge topic um, at Workday. And um, uh, Anil Bushri, the CEO, uh, used to say that uh, that culture beats strategy, right? And that's a really interesting notion, and it, it's fantastic to see from the inside uh, really how how much attention is given uh, to culture at Workday. Uh, and the best part of that is it's it's very data driven. Like workday's people culture is very data driven. So um, we have now recently acquired another company uh, that's called Picon, right? And Picon um, basically does uh, employee engagement uh, uh, through surveys and analytics. But even before Picon, uh, there was a weekly survey that would be sent out to everyone uh, at workday and. Every employee would get three questions, uh, so it would take one minute to answer. But every manager then had, you know, an anonymously collected perspective of how their team is doing, and this was really informative, even for even actually in those situations where you would think, okay, I have ten people working for me, I know what's happening here, but quite often uh, what the people then basically relay anonymously can be quite different from what you actually hear directly. And um, so with a system like this in place, every manager has a very direct feedback uh, from uh, from their teams, whether their team is, you know, 10 people or, 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 or 500 people. Uh, and they really know what to focus on when they want to be improving uh, the um, employee experience. So now with, you know, now with Picon in place, uh, we have actually just gone live internally about a week ago at Workday with Picon. And that's, that's a really great upgrade of that, of that process. Like everybody at Workday now is really buzzed about, yeah. uh, about what, what, what we get there. Uh, and the next step on the journey will be certainly like connecting Picon with our people analytics insights. Um, and so that's something that we will be working toward and, and building for our customers, uh, that, that kind of integration as well. Yeah, you know, that's super interesting. And it speaks to the, the need, the importance of more real-time feedback. So the older model of like the annual engagement survey, um, you know, that then you know, you collect the data for a couple of weeks. And then, so I take the survey, they, after a couple of weeks, it closes and then people do their, their analyses and, and everything. And then they pass it along to the upper management team. And then over time, it trickles its way down um, to other levels of the organization. And 
sometimes it's months, maybe half a year later that you actually start to like have a meeting where you, you see how this information is being utilized. And by that point, it's almost useless information <laughs> anyways. And so Absolutely. just having more real time understanding mm. of where you're at more pulse mm. surveys. Um, uh, the, I love the idea of a weekly, uh, a simple weekly survey, just to understand where you're at, um, where the yep. gaps are. I think that's, that's tremendous. And, and, if anyone listening, you're thinking, oh, you know, we've never even done an annual survey. Okay, well, you need to start somewhere. So start somewhere, get a little bit of, of comfort and familiarity with it, get some people on your team that can help with that. But, uh, but that's, that's certainly a really low bar. Um, and we, 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 we need to get past that quickly, we need to get to the point where we're just uh, having it on an ongoing basis, better understanding uh, our people, what's driving them, um, how, uh, what their performance issues are, and how we can better support them through mentoring, coaching, career, professional development. Well, Philip, it has been a real pleasure chatting with you today. Uh, the time has flown by. I recognize we're getting close to the end of our time. I don't think I said at the beginning, um, but you are joining us from Prague. So it's getting into the evening there. I'm sure you have plans. So we're going to let you go. But before uh, we close out this episode, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about Workday, find out more about the work that you're doing, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. That's it. Thank you, Jonathan. So, um, I am present on um, pretty much all of the uh, usual social media channels. I'm uh, on LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, if you if you look for Philip Dusek, you will find me there. Uh, and uh, also, if you would want to see a little bit more about my upcoming novel, uh, you can find more at uh, www w dot flock without birds uh, dot com uh, and so i would love to hear from uh from uh the listeners and uh, stay in touch it's been a pleasure i encourage listeners to reach out to get connected to find out more about what philip can do for you and as always i hope everyone can stay healthy and safe that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day and i hope you can have a great week alchemy of truly remarkable leadership, ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital. 
exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us. Make their Christmas unforgettable with goat guns. Looking for the perfect gift for your husband or man who is a gun lover? Look no further. Goat guns are the greatest gift of all time miniature gun models. They are the perfect blend of quality and detail. From pistols to rifles, there's a goat gun for every collector, history buff, or gamer. Whether for display or for a fun collecting hobby, goat guns will bring joy and excitement to him. Surprise your loved ones this Christmas with a goat gun, the ultimate gift that won't disappoint. Shop at goatguns.com.